Many of you may be familiar with the universal hot crazy matrix for classifying women and men, developed by Dana McClendon and James Yeager of Tactical Response. Well, these guys did a great first pass at categorizing people based on only two characteristics. It is a bit shallow. So we're going to add some depth by taking this to a third dimension and incorporating mathematical equations. First, we'll analyze the matrix for women and then for men. Plus, we'll take a look at gender differences in IQ and their practical relevance. The first matrix classifies women based on their appearance and behavior. We have the hot axis going from zero to 10, pretty standard, and the crazy axis going from four to 10 because McLennan stipulates that all women are at least four crazy. The hot crazy line separates this grid by positively increasing diagonal. So already we can see that hotter women get away with crazier behavior. To find the equation of this line, we take the rise over the run and include the z-intercept. In this equation, Z is crazy and H is hot. Now, because men are visual creatures and physical attraction is vital, any woman below a five hot is in the no-go zone. She'll be completely ignored unless the guy needs something from her. Now, the fun zone is a transitory zone. This is the area under the hot crazy line. So to find that, we integrate the line equation. And since this zone extends from five to eight hot, those are the bounds of integration. Generally, this is where younger women are, and as they age, they transition out of this zone to a more permanent location. Above the crazy line, watch out. This is the danger zone, which McClendon warns contains redhead strippers, hairdressers, and women named Tiffany and Brittany. These are the crazy exits, so make sure they don't become yours. Since this area is above the hot crazy line, we need to invert the equation by solving for H in terms of C. Then we integrate the crazy from the top to the bottom of this range, seven to 10. Women in this zone generally wear dyed hair, heavy makeup, and not very much clothing. A good rule of thumb is that the less you see of a woman's natural face and hair, and the more you see of her body, the more dangerous she is. Moving on to less crazy, but more attractive women, we have the date zone. This is again below the crazy line, but not quite calm enough to settle down. So first we take the line equation and subtract the baseline of seven crazy. Then we integrate this from the limits of eight to 10 hot, and that area is the date zone. Equally pretty, but less crazy women comprise the wife zone. The quantity of people in this category is fortunately not proportional to area, and many good options do exist. If you find one of these women who is still single, you should strongly consider a long-term relationship. These women are eight to 10 hot and five to seven crazy. And that U symbol means that the area is the union of these two ranges. Finally, there's the Miraculous Unicorn Zone. Although McLennan claims such ladies don't exist, I've actually discovered a few of them in engineering. They don't go, get out much though, so you really have to look for them. These girls are above an eight hot and below a five crazy. And if you find one, you really hit the jackpot. One caveat McLennan mentions and is that a woman can vanish from one zone and reappear in another without warning. For this reason, you should collect a cluster of data points in order to accurately classify her. So why is this important? Well, it, starting with just one point, you could really go anywhere. A single point extends in rays. It takes two points to make a line and three to make a curve. Most guys prefer women with curves, so make sure that you analyze at least three interactions with her before drawing a conclusion. And those instances should be at different times of the month. Now, appearances aren't everything, so let's analyze this matrix in three dimensions. We see the boxes don't extend quite all the way to the hot, crazy plane. They stop at this line. There's a third axis that matters, and that's intelligence. We'll set the line in an IQ of 85. More details on that in a minute. Behind this line is the idiot zone. This includes the dumb blondes, the girls who don't understand anything you say, so they just blink their eyes and Google, and the ones who are so dependent on their phones that they can't get anywhere without the GPS and still end up getting lost at least twice on the way there. This is where the one night stands happen. So avoid close contact with, with these women, especially in the presence of alcohol, unless you end up with an STD, child support, and a guilty conscience. Now let's dig deeper into intelligence. These are representative IQ curves for men and women based on research by Clary, Chrysler, and McCreary. The horizontal axis is IQ, which ranges from zero to 200, but almost nobody is in the extreme, so it's shown from 40 to 160. The average IQ for the combined population is 100. And this is pretty similar for both men and women. They peak in about the same spot. 
Standard deviation for the combined population is 15, but this is larger for men than for women due to the spread of the data. 68% of people fall within one standard deviation. This is where the IQ curves for men and women cross and represents the normal range. We can see that because the peak for women is higher than the peak for men, there are more women than men in this category. 95% of people fall within plus or minus two standard deviations of the mean and 99% fall within plus or minus three. So beyond an IQ of 55 or 145, almost no one exists. Now below one standard deviation, an IQ of 85 is the idiot zone from a previous slide. We can see only about 16% of people are in this category and more of those are men than women due to the higher tail. On the other side, above an IQ of 115 is the smart zone, which similarly contains more men than women. If we do a reality check, this makes sense. On the one hand, most incarcerated people are male. And on the other hand, most engineers and scientists are male, and most women are not in those two occupations. Now, what is the significance of this? Basically, as Aaron Clary mentions in his book, The Curse of the High IQ, it's easier to form relationships with people who are an intellectual match. Now, most people don't know their IQ, but that's okay. All you really need to know is if someone's intellect is similar to yours, and that you can figure out pretty quickly through interaction. Nerdy guys will have more trouble finding a wife because the smart guys outnumber the smart girls by about two to one. So they'll generally either settle for someone less intelligent or die alone. Average guys have plenty of girls to choose from, and idiots often overestimate their intelligence, so won't realize while they're having trouble finding a mate. Now let's move on to the male matrix. This is much simpler than the female matrix. The hot axis once again goes from zero to 10, but note that the vertical monetary axis is based on a log scale because it involves exponential numbers. Women have a very large no-go zone, but beyond about a seven hot is the fun zone. Here you can date, you can hang out, but whether or not things get more serious depends on your income. Above about a six-figure starting salary is the husband zone. Beyond this point, appearances are irrelevant, and you might find yourself in a beauty and the beast scenario. There's really no cap here, so rest assured that as long as you have money, there is a woman out there who wants to be with you. Just refer to the female matrix to make sure she's a good choice. And if you're hot and broke, you can still have fun. Although appearances and income are important, women aren't just gold diggers, and the good ones will be looking for more depth of character. Notice that the boxes don't extend all the way to the hot money plane. They halt at this threshold. The third axis is the personality axis, and actually has three zones. A negative personality lands in the pessimist zone. Nobody wants you here because you'll just increase her anxiety higher than it already is. Now, if a guy has a positive attitude that extends only to himself, that is the jerk zone. You'll know these guys because their ego is so big, there isn't room for anyone else in their life. Ladies, if a guy talks constantly about himself or down about other people, especially his exes, and if he can't explain what he does for a living, those are big red flags. Guys, if you can get one date but have trouble getting a second, do a personality check. You'll catch more flies with honey than with vinegar. So these are the hot crazy matrices in 3D. Hopefully with the increased depth of analysis, you'll be well equipped to assess interpersonal situations in the future and choose wisely whether to charge forward or run for your life. I welcome feedback, so please like, subscribe, and comment on whether or not you agree with this analysis and if you've experienced any relevant situations.